Okay, welcome back to Guitar Science. So today, we're going to swap out the bridge on one of my favorite guitars, but also one of the most frustrating guitars I own, Telecaster. So here it is, it's Wilkinson Bridge. It's pretty thick. It's definitely, you know, good build quality. Um, and it just feels substantial. So you can see it side by side here. It's newer, it's cleaner. Don't hold that against the old one. But um, it just looks better overall. Weight-wise, it's quite a big difference. So it's definitely heftier. So here's the fender bridge. It's gross, it's old. The screws are sharp on the end. You don't want to touch them. Uh, and they don't look much better on the bottom either. So overall, this bridge is kind of old. It's kind of beat up. And quite frankly, it wasn't the highest quality to begin with. And then there's this bridge. So immediately, it's thicker, it's higher quality, it's newer, it's shinier, of course. Um, look at the staggered saddles. I'm not entirely sure what that's supposed to do. I guess it kind of changes exactly where each string hits, but people say on the internet that this is easier to intonate, and I don't think I'm going to have any problems intonating it. Uh, the saddles themselves are bigger as well, and you can see that, frankly, it's just a, a lot more substantial. I mean, look at that. It's very clear. Side by side, it's a little hard to see until you tilt it, but definitely the newer bridge is thicker. And what does that mean? Does that transfer vibrations to the body better? Who knows? Do you even want that, or do you want the energy to stay in the string? Who, who knows, right? But uh, we'll see. It's a, it's a variable and we're changing it, so we'll see what happens. So here is the Telecaster. It's got a Wenge neck and fretboard, unfinished, with a 59 round back neck profile by Warmoth. And it feels absolutely amazing. It's the best feeling neck I think I've ever played. The grain of the Wenge is really, really nice under your hands. It's, it's kind of like... Uh, rosewood almost, but much, much grainier. Um, so it's kind of oily, but it has a really nice grain structure that feels really good and, and complex and natural under your hand. The top is also different, and it's rosewood. It's not the best finish, but it's rosewood. And uh, it came with Duncan Quarter Pounder pickups already installed, which is exactly what I was looking for. I landed on that set because people said they were a little less twangy, a little less telecastery. And you can see the core is alder. There's a nice knot, a nice little ding. So this guitar has a lot of issues with fret buzz and action and intonation. And I can't really adjust the bridge saddles very well as they are right now. So hopefully swapping out the bridge will fix all these issues. If not, we're going to have to look at some neck things, and that's always more of a pain. Okay, time to change out the bridge. Here's a little bridge swap montage groove I did on this guitar after the swap. Something I noticed when I removed the bridge, there's no finish under the bridge. I found that odd because in my understanding you typically finish the body before you put the hardware on. So I don't really know what that means. Um, the hardware and the electronics are Fender made in Mexico. I don't know if the body is, so I thought that was an interesting development. The bridge also looks great on the guitar. 
compared to the old one that just looked kind of gross. Not good old, just gross old. So what did swapping the bridge ultimately do? Well, the first thing I noticed as soon as I picked it up and started playing was that the guitar is significantly louder than it ever was before. I'm sure a tiny bit of that is due to the new strings, but I've changed strings before and I've never noticed that much of a difference. And I also noticed that the neck really, really resonates in your hand. And before on the old bridge, it did not do that. So that's very interesting. The intonation was actually really easy to set. So that problem was very easy to fix. But there's still some issues with action and fret buzz. The guitar is not unplayable, but it's not to an acceptable level for me. So in the next video, we're going to try some neck fixes, and we're going to see if we can really get this Telecaster playing well.